How does demand defrost work for a heat pump? We've got a unit right here, it's R22, it's a package heat pump, and I'm gonna explain how defrost works, how to force a defrost, how to know if you have a defrost control problem or a sensor problem, and how to check the sensors. So this is the package heat pump we're working on. Here is the board, right? And on this board, we've got some test pins, right? And if you could zoom in and show them the test pin, see that? To be able to force a defrost, it's really easy. While the unit's in the heat mode, you take your thermostat screwdriver and you short the test pins, all right? And if you short the test pins, the defrost should be initiated. Now, if your sensors are not measuring a delta T, uh, your coil sensor's not below 35 degrees and the coil's not actually that temperature, then it's probably not gonna stay in defrost. But if, you're, if you have uh, a coil temperature that's below 35 degrees and your sensor measures that and you short the test pins, it'll stay in defrost until it reaches uh, the terminate temperature. Now you can set a different terminate temperature and I'm gonna explain to you how to do that. On your board, you've got these uh, little temperatures. You've got 50, 60, 70, and 80, and it's set for 70. It was set for 50. What does that mean? It means that when it goes into defrost, it's gonna reach that 50 degree or that 70 degree, whatever you set it for, temperature on the coil before it stops the defrost. Defrost for this machine lasts about 14 minutes, okay? And this defrost control has two sensors. A coil sensor, an outdoor coil sensor, measures that temperature of the coil, and an outdoor ambient sensor. And I'm gonna show you where those are. Your outdoor ambient sensor is right here behind this grill. Your outdoor coil sensor is behind this access panel, and it's on one of the U-bends of the coil. Now, if you look right here, the black wires go to the ambient sensor, and you can see it says AMB, and then the blue wires, the two blue wires go to the coil sensor, okay? Now, for R22, you can see the pressures, low side, which we need to change this. You've got digital gauges. So R22 is about 60, the high side's about uh, 240. So that's pretty good pressures for R22. We're gonna go ahead and force the defrost. And then I'm gonna show you how to check sensors. All right, see the test pins? First thing that should happen, reversing valve switches. All right, show them the outdoor fan. Outdoor fan is de-energized. See how it shuts off and the compressor stays running. What are we doing during defrost? We're sending hot gas into the outdoor coil to thaw it out. You can see how it's staying in defrost. See how it's staying in defrost? It's gonna stay in defrost. It stays about 14 minutes or until you have a certain separation of temperature, a delta T in between the coil and the ambient sensor. Now I bet you I can change this uh, temperature uh, right here from 70 to 50, watch. And look, boom. It doesn't stay in defrost as long. So the reason we're here is because the homeowner, uh, she came into the office and showed us some pictures of the coil and the coil inside was like a block of ice. It shouldn't be a block of ice. So what I'm doing is I'm checking to make, make sure the defrost control works. So I'm able to initiate a defrost. Then I'm changing the terminate temperature to a higher temperature so it stays in defrost longer and then I'm checking the charge. So if you have a situation where you have a coil that's becoming a block of ice, what do you need to check? Outdoor fan, make sure it works. Check the outdoor coil, make sure it's not dirty. Check the refrigerant, make sure there's enough refrigerant that way it heats properly and it's able to defrost because if it doesn't have enough refrigerant, then it won't have enough hot gas to send to the outdoor coil during defrost. So those are the, th the things I'm gonna check. Now, again, if we force it into defrost, right, we short the test pins with a screwdriver, and then it doesn't go into a defrost, we need to change our defrost board. We also need to check our sensors. So how do you do that? You take your meter, you put it on ohms, you take your meter leads, and for this one, I've actually got these to where I can take them apart, see? Remember, coil sensor's gotta be 35 degrees. Coil's gotta be 35 degrees for us to stay in defrost. 
So now I'm going to measure the coil sensor first. And they should be about the same if the unit's off. If the unit's running, then your coil sensor is probably going to be a little bit, uh, well, both readings are going to be different. So they should be different. Let's take a look. I'm measuring the coil sensor, 61 ohms. All right. Now we're going to measure the ambient air sensor. If you don't know anything about uh, time and temperature defrost, I've got a video on how to check a uh, defrost thermostat. All right, now we're measuring the ambient air sensor. It's 41. See how I said it would be different? It's because the unit's running. And that coil temperature is going to be much colder than the air temperature, right? Because during, a, during the heat mode, this outdoor coil, which was the condenser that rejects heat during the summer, right? During cooling mode, now it's the evaporator. So it's becoming much colder than the outside air. That way it can gain heat from it. Now its job is to absorb heat instead of reject it. I hope that makes sense. If you want to know more about charging a heat pump in the heating mode, check out my uh, HVAC training courses videos. I've got a video specifically on how to charge a heat pump in the heat mode and what tools to use. I hope you understand uh, about demand defrost. Uh, I know I can just ramble sometimes and just but hopefully you understand you need to get a resistance chart that way you can actually have that chart to reference when you're checking those sensors that way you know hey this reading is 40 or 60 and it correlates to this temperature so it should be this temperature so all right let's check these pressures again r22 67 on the low 249 on the high units in pretty good shape outdoor fans not getting hot and I think that we either have a bad defrost board or that terminate temperature that that needed to be changed I really don't I don't see any problems right now honestly we could have a bad board but I'm not gonna replace it if it's working so hope you guys learned something in today's video you've been watching HVAC tips for technicians if you like the video hit the like button subscribe and smash that bell ding so you know what I'm doing I'll keep you cool if you let me